It's been almost two weeks since I received my Quad Cortex and today I'm gonna do some neural captures with it and just share some of my thoughts on the capture feature itself and share the process of capturing an amp with you. We are also going to do a quick A-B comparison in this video between the real amplifier and the capture. First of all, here are some of the captures that I've done in the past few days. Okay, so first of all, uh, this is my Friedman Wildwood that I just got recently. Um, this is a capture of like a, like a drive, overdrive channel type thing. Feels and sounds absolutely beautiful. Here's a Mesa Boogie Mark V 2C Plus. Now these are all going through the same impulse response that I'm using. That's why they sound really similar. Also, I tend to set up my amplifiers in a way so they sound and feel the best to me which is why some of these might sound really, really similar. There's, there's a, certainly a difference. So this is a 2C+. Plus. And this is a Friedman again. Again, 2C+. Plus. This is the MXR preamp of the Eddie Van Halen. I'm using, I was running it through the React IR using their power amp emulation section to, you know, breathe some life into the pedal itself. <laughs> There's also my 6505 PV. Here's a capture of a Fender Concert 6G12. Uh, this is a capture from my XFX, actually. This is a Bogner Shiva. that greediness, that breakup type. I should probably recapture this one with more, like more low ends. Um, sounds really cool. Either way, I guess that's an idea. If you have an, a modeler already, a camper, or an XFX or something, you can get this unit, recapture all of your favorite tones or amplifiers and then you know, in case you were planning to sell one already, that could be a little, you know, cheat. One really cool thing about Quad Cortex capture feature is that it can also capture pedals. I did capture my favorite overdrive, which is the Sugar Drive. It's still not capable of capturing fuzz distortion or any, you know, other modulation type effects. But from my brief chats with Doug, with time, we might see Nero being able to capture and reproduce more types of effects. 
Um, so I'm curious to see how they pull that off in the future. But let's, let's focus on what we can do today. And that is capture my Friedman Wildwood, which will be going through my beautiful 2x12 little cubes owl cabinet, uh, which I'll mic up with my old, old Octava microphone. And um, yeah, I'll share some of my thoughts later in the video. Oh, another really cool thing to mention is you won't need to open a manual or search around YouTube for a tutorial video on how to capture your favorite amps. Let me show why. You just go to New Neural Capture and then you have the instructions on how to set everything up. It's right there on your screen. You can, you know, connect your headphones or XLR outputs to monitor capture out into the amplifier or the pedal or whatever you're capturing go back into the input of the device once everything is ready just confirm and now we are on the capture page This is not something that's entirely new. We've seen companies like Kemper, uh, Moore, and XFX in a certain way capture uh, your amplifiers and whatnot. I've had a chance to try all three of those, and you know, Kemper was absolutely impressive, amazing when it came out. It still is an amazing unit to this day. You know, Moore did a surprisingly good job. And then XFX had a bit of a different approach to it, but very capable uh, in its own way. Quad Cortex somehow manages to make the whole process very straightforward. And the quality of captures are the best one I've heard by far. Uh, if you're interested in a more detailed comparison between the Camper and the Quad Cortex, I think you should check out Rabea's video. He did an amazing job comparing these two units he was very thorough and very detailed and i think he managed to do a really really fair comparison between the units something i would probably never bother doing to such a degree but we luckily have him so go check out his video i'm gonna link it in the description but yeah all that doesn't mean that i don't have some you know some things to point out um, first of all, during the capture process, when you're in the calibration menu, if you let the, the unit do the auto set, the auto set of levels, it tells you play the guitar until the in one level rotary stops moving. You play the guitar and the rotary never stops moving. 
it comes to a point where it starts jumping up and down two or three dbs and it never stops it doesn't stop until you stop playing it takes only a few minutes to figure out how it actually works but you know at least i think making the instructions a bit more clearer would just make this thing absolutely absolutely perfect again it's not something that's hard to figure out um so it's it's pretty much a minor complaint second thing is i found that most of my captures have a bit less gain uh, than the, you know, than what I've set on the amplifier or on the pedals, especially noticeable in like a breakup tones or like mid to high gain tones. My workaround is to set just before the capture, I would set the amplifier just a tiny bit, you know, more gainy, and then it would capture, and then when I compare the two. I would gain down the amplifier just a tiny bit so I, you know, have the more a more fair comparison between the two. It's exactly how I've done the comparison today and it's exactly how I'm doing it when I'm capturing tones for myself. I've also found some ground noise uh, issues when the USB is plugged in. When I plug it out, no issues whatsoever, but when it's plugged in, my Mesa Boogie Mark V is making some crazy noises. It could just be shitty electricity in my workspace. Uh, the conditions here are not ideal, and I would need to check more around the around the studio to see if there's anything else that's causing the trouble. And I'll make sure to keep you guys updated on through my you know Instagram or just community posts here on YouTube. Also, I would love to see another um, quality of life improvement, and that is just renaming and moving the captures around on the quad cortex. I haven't checked if that something like that is available through the cloud, but on the quad cortex itself, you can just copy the captures to a different different slots, but not just, you know, like move them, cut and paste and then rename. Um, I'm editing the video and I'm realizing the potential reason why you will not be able to rename your captures. If Narrow DSP decides to open up like a narrow capture market where you will be able to maybe sell your captures, it will prevent people from, you know, editing the details of the captures and reselling them as their own. So maybe that's, maybe that's the reason. I don't know, but it's something to think about. But yeah, that's pretty much all the complaints that I've got when it comes to capturing feature and I gotta say those are pretty negligible compared to the first of all quality of tones the ease of use the workflow that comes with the quad cortex um, I think it's absolutely phenomenal also we gotta keep in mind that um, this is a better version of the software and it's competing with companies and units that have been around for years and that have improved on their units with countless and countless firmware updates through the years. And for Nero to get this far with only their beta is something to give them credit for. And I think we'd all be better off um, giving Nero DSP some constructive criticism and just, you know, a little bit of support at this point. I have a next video on Quad Cortex coming out next week uh, where I'll just run through some of the presets that I've made that I'll be putting up on the cloud for every you know, Quad Cortex user to download and use. I will also share some of my final thoughts uh, on the unit, at least in the stage that it's in currently. Also, in the next video, I'll let you know which one was the A and which one was the B from the shootout. Um, so make sure to subscribe and catch the next video and make sure to comment let me know in the comments below which one do you think was a and which one do you think was b uh in the shootout let's get the conversation started and yeah until then stay safe stay awesome and i'll see you in the next video bye